So the purpose of this video is to help you to associate um, your terminals to physical components um, that aren't, aren't necessarily a standard terminal block you would see in an automation plant. So we're going to be dealing with components that would look similar to these, these socket junction modules, which come in a variety of, of different configurations. So the typical way of doing it, or the, the more basic way of setting up your terminal blocks, would be by using the insert end terminal feature, associating it to a terminal block. So in this case, it would be TB1, selecting OK. I'm going to go ahead and associate a part, a connector to this end, and I'm going to give this a cable, like so. Now, for those socket junction modules, when there are multi-terminals for specific, um, for one part, for the, maybe there's, maybe the configuration, and in this instance what we're going to be working with is uh, there are three, technically three circuits um, with seven terminals in each one. So the first thing we're going to do is actually use insert terminal just a single insertion. I'm going to find the line where I want to put it and it's going to automatically give me TB2 and this is where I'm going to assign a manufacturer's part. If I assign a manufacturer's part here for this instance it's going to be a, a three circuit by seven terminal for each one. Now I've seen some instances um, on the web where people have tried to take all seven terminals and put it under one circuit. If you want to get this to work correctly uh, I find that this works um, more efficiently doing it this way. So I'll select my part and now we have as we can see terminals A and B. I'll do the same thing for the next one. Now when I insert that second terminal it's automatically going to give me TB3 here. We don't want TB3. We want it to be associated to TB2 as well. What I need to do is not select TB2 but I need to select this option just below it that I have highlighted right now, that levels icon. When I select that and I hit OK, we will get pins C and D. I do the same thing for each one of these and we can get the correct outcome we are looking for. all these. Again, this is, uh, this is slightly tedious to do because you're, you have to individually insert these. However, the end result is, is that your schematic will be correct, which is ultimately what we want. And there we have it. So now we can see here, if I zoom out just a hair, we have TB2, our full terminal block. I have all my pins, A, B, C, D, and so on, all the way down to Z. And they're broken out uh, based on each section of that socket junction module, um, level 1, level 2, level 3, or section 1, 2, and 3. So let's go ahead and add some parts to the opposing end, because again, if I try to turn these into a cable. I can't. It's grayed out. So let's go in and insert a symbol. And if you don't know, control R will give you the last command. So if you're going to use the same symbol over and over again, there you go. So let's take these. We'll turn them into a cable. And for this instance, I'm going to select a Cat5 cable. It's the first four cores. And I'll do the same thing for these four cores. Like that. Oh, I missed those. All right. So now if I want to come in, I can take a look at my um, my terminal strip. I'm going to select the terminal. Actually, before I do that, to uh, change our attributes here. So we can see that I have all of these terminal blocks or terminals 
set up in a row here. There's a lot of TB2. Totally unnecessary to have TB2 on every single one of these, even level, if I don't want them. So the easiest way I find to do it, highlight the ones. You can highlight all of them or just the ones you don't want. Go to attributes, turn off the, the attributes you don't want on. If you need to bring it back, simply turn that back on, like so. So let's take a look at the actual terminal block by going to edit terminal strip here. And we can see here that I have on the right hand side where I added those cables, I have my main terminal block, which is all one part, my destination to show where it is on what sheet, the cable cores and the cable that it's associated to as well as the destination for each one. The nice thing about being able to do this as well is I can also come in and I can draw my terminal strip. So if I go to my sheets and I open my terminal strip, we can actually see from my terminal block. Of course, this is just a quick idea of how to set this up. Um, I don't think you would ever have an entire Cat5 coming out of one terminal block like that. Maybe. Who knows? And it goes to all the opposing different, through those cables, to the opposing connectors as such. So last thing I want to do is actually um, open up that part and show you the manufacturer's part and how I have that set up. So here is the circuits and terminals. Again, um, in some instances, you know, you, you might insert the, the terminals and associate, I'm sorry, insert the circuits and associate terminals, how it would physically be in your schematic, which is how I would have started as well. Um, but for this instance, to get all of them to show up, we do a circuit and we put our terminals in here, like such. And here is where you would name them A, B, plus, minus, J1, J2, so on and so forth, depending on what it is. All right. Thanks for watching.